Hey guys, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. Today, as you can tell by the title, we're going to be exploring my favorite plot twists. So obviously I'm not gonna be spoiling any of these books or telling you what the twist is, but I'm gonna be going through some of my favorite thrillers that have the best plot twists I can possibly think of. But before we get into the books, let me go ahead and tell you about today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity learn new skills, and invest in themselves for personal growth. Have a specific skill you're trying to learn? Skillshare is the perfect place to start. From photography and illustration to graphic design, freelancing, and more, you can find classes that will match your goals and interests. Here you can see that I have bookmarked a class on marketing so I can actually help improve my marketing strategy for my private practice. And I've also taken a lot of classes on balance and self-care. By far, my favorite class that I've taken has been the Ultimate Self-Care Playbook, which is actually taught by Jonathan Van Ness. Hello! I love them. If you don't know who they are, they are one of the hosts of Queer Eye, and I, I'm just absolutely obsessed. This is exactly why I was interested in Skillshare, to kind of get exposure to cool people, teaching new things, and obviously being my own boss with YouTube and Patreon and also being my own boss in my private practice with no coworkers, it's hard to find time for self-care and prioritize that balance. But this class and plenty of others on Skillshare have really brought that to me. So I am so grateful for this service. And if you guys want to become a member of Skillshare, the first thousand people to click my link down below will get a month for free. So make sure to do that. And again, thank you so much much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now let's go ahead and get into the plot twists. So these are not necessarily going to be all my favorite books or thrillers. I have a video of my top 25 all-time favorite thrillers. I'll link it above and below if you haven't seen that one. Those are gonna be my top ultimate faves because a lot of my favorites actually don't have the biggest, most shocking plot twists. I tend to like slower, more character-driven thrillers and horror books as well, but none of those are gonna be in this video. These recommendations are purely based on these books having the most shocking, surprising, out of left field, wild plot twists. So first out, I just want to start out with probably the twist that blew my mind the most. And this one's also really controversial as well. So some people love this twist. I happen to be one of them. Some people absolutely hate this twist. It is a little bit speculative. So you have to suspend disbelief just a little bit, but it was on the edge of reality enough to where I really enjoyed it. And that is the big final twist in Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough. This story follows a woman who gets into a relationship and she finds out when she comes into work the next day starting this new job that the guy that she started hooking up with is actually her boss and he's a therapist. So he has, according to the book, obviously I'm a therapist and I don't feel like I'm a manipulative mastermind, but according to the book, his psychological skills give him these manipulative mastermind abilities. We don't quite know the sinister dynamics going on behind the scenes. And we, the reader, are just trying to figure out what is going on. It goes absolutely batshit wild at the end. So if you're looking for a crazy twist, I highly recommend that one. Another absolute classic twist is in Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. This is the thriller that got me into reading thrillers. So if you haven't read it yet and you've somehow gotten all this way without getting spoiled for this twist, you have to pick it up immediately. No one will see this coming. I definitely didn't 
when I picked this up, it was totally shocking. And this story follows the disappearance of a woman and we are seeing the husband as he is suspected of her murder. He's an unreliable narrator. We do not know as readers if he actually did it or not. So we're trying to find out if he didn't, who did, but maybe he did it. There are different motives and he keeps making himself look really bad, but when you find out what really happened, you will be shook to your core. This is the blueprint. I'm just gonna say it now, we have to give credit to this book. This is the blueprint for all modern thrillers. If you are struggling with YA thrillers, which I often do, <laughs> I don't have a lot of YA thrillers in my favorites list, but this next one made it in there because of the plot twist at the end. And that is I'll Never Tell by Abigail Haas. This is also published under the title Dangerous Girls, I believe in the Europe slash UK edition. This is called Dangerous Girls, so just keep that in mind. But this is a YA thriller that follows this group of teens as they go on a spring break trip, I believe to Aruba and one of them ends up turning up dead. So we follow the friend group as the rest of them come under suspicion and are taken into this foreign police office and they're horribly interrogated. We feel so, so hard for our main characters as we're just trying to figure out what the heck happened here. And when it is finally revealed, the way I wanted to throw this book across the room. The way I absolutely wanted to throw this book across the room. <laughs> it totally caught me off guard. And I have not felt such strong emotions reading a book in such a long time. You have to pick this one up if you like shocking twists. Next up, I have to recommend Confessions by Kane Minato. This one gets you from the first chapter, I swear. This book is pretty short and it's only made up of six chapters, but the chapters themselves are, are pretty long. They can get like 30 to 40 pages, I feel like. So pretty big chunks that you're reading, but your reward at the end of each chapter is this huge mind altering twist. The twist at the beginning of the first chapter literally had me screaming. I read this one when I was stuck in an airport during a snowstorm and I just, I, I didn't even care that I was stuck in this airport because I was so entertained by the twists in this book. You will not see any of it coming. And I think you should go completely blind for the plot and figure it out as you go along because it keeps you even more on the edge of your seat. Next up, another classic. We have Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter, and I'm just holding up the dust jacket because the book is actually in the other room. I am currently in the midst of my reread of this book, which is so exciting since this is my favorite book. I'm getting to go through and annotate and refresh my memory and God, even knowing the twists are coming in this one, they still get me, they still get me. Karen Slaughter's writing is just so, so effective. Basically, we are following the story of these sisters. There were originally three sisters in this family. One of them went missing when all of them were young, but now something is happening in their town that is bringing up their sister's disappearance. Other girls start going missing and the sisters suspect that it may have something to do with the unsolved case of their sister's disappearance. It is extremely graphic, extremely intense, but these twists will hit you like whiplash. It is insane how effective this is. Like I, I literally, on this reread, I knew the twists were coming. I knew they were coming and yet I was still freaking out about it. I don't know if it was just like the nostalgia and my love for this book, but God, I just think it's so good. Next up, I wanna talk about Sometimes I Lie by Alice Feeney. If you like an unreliable narrator, this one is for you. It literally says it in the synopsis. Our main character, the POV we are following, is a liar. We have no idea who or what to believe the entire time we're reading. All we know is that our main character was in a relationship. She said her husband was this horrible person, 
but she's also a liar. And now she's in a coma, kind of listening to the things going on around her, and we're not sure what to believe, what led her to being in this coma, if her husband is actually horrible, or if she is making it all up. It is a wild ride until the very last page, and I think there's a twist in here that a lot of books since this has been published, try to take and put their own twist on, but this one does it the best. You can't beat the original. Next, I wanna talk about For Better and Worse by Margot Hunt. This, when you go in, seems like just a classic, normal, drama-filled domestic thriller. And then at about the halfway point, it goes off the wall. The biggest twist that I never expected ends up happening. The story follows a mother and father as they do whatever they can to protect their son. Their son has landed in this really dangerous situation and they know that taking the legal ethical route will put their son through a lot of trauma and torment. So they decide to take the law into their own hands and doing so wrap themselves up in this whole huge thing and the twist at the end oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god even now like in this moment talking about it i don't know how i feel about it it's like it's not what i didn't want to happen but how can you live with that oh my god this is so hard to talk about without giving spoilers but this book is so underrated you have to read it if you want a fast paced shocking book Next, let's talk about Pretty Little Wife by Darby Kane. I was not expecting this going into this book for it to be so graphic and intense. It just has this sinister feel as you're reading that reminds me a lot of like a Karen Slaughter style of writing. Our main character is this devious little wife who truly believes that she has gotten rid of her husband. The only problem is she left his body for it to be found in a staged way and um, the body ain't there. <laughs> so we're trying to figure out if this man never actually got killed by her. He woke up, gained consciousness and walked away and now he's like plotting revenge against her or if maybe he had another enemy that capitalized on his death or if something else wild happens and i swear you will not be able to predict what happens in this book if you predict even the smaller twist in this book you 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 must be a genius because i think this book is such a genius work of thrilling literature i think it is so well written especially our main character she is just this devious little woman and I ate her up. I absolutely enjoyed every second reading this book. The next book I'm going to talk about is also a bit controversial. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Again, I wouldn't be recommending it unless I was absolutely in love with it. And that is Local Woman Missing by Mary Kubica. This one is wild. There's a lot going on. Like, when I say a lot going on, I mean like there is subplot after subplot after subplot and somehow they're all interconnected at the end that just in a way that just makes you want to scream. It is insane the way that Mary Kubica connected all of these stories because there's basically like four or five missing women that have disappeared over the years. We're also following a woman who has recently gone missing in this town and we're following the perspective of someone that is actively missing like we just get their perspective in this like dark dank basement so we have really no idea what's going on here if all of these women were taken by the same person or if there's multiple things going on it is wild and the ending reveal you have to suspend a little disbelief i will say but if you're capable of suspending that disbelief i think this will get your goat it is so shocking i have yet another ya title which again is so rare so if i'm singing the praises of ya you know it has to be really good and that is 14 ways to die by vincent ralph this story follows a young girl whose mother was killed by a serial killer that has never been caught. He's still on the run. So she decides to go on a reality show and basically taunt him, like use herself as bait on this reality show. And now all these people are like resurging interest in the case and it works. He actually starts to come after her and we're trying to figure out 
who this man is, if he's even a man, and I did not see it coming at all. This book is so fast paced. There are so many red herrings. I feel like it's just like, boom, 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 distracting you so it can pull out the biggest punch at the end. Next up, let's talk about Verity, okay? Can we just talk about Verity for two seconds? I know, I'll make it quick. I've raved about this book so much, but it's because I love it. This is a thrilling romance. So there are a lot of romance elements in here as well. Be aware of that before you go in. There is some pretty heavy smut, but there's also a compelling thriller plot line as we're following this author who has taken over for a very famous author to continue her series after she has gotten in an accident and is in a coma. But this new author doesn't just take over Verity's books. She actually moves into her house, starts a relationship with her husband, and basically replaces her in her entire life. And Verity, even though she's in a coma, she is not too happy about that. So she starts to seek her revenge on the new author. And it is absolutely wild. It's kind of one of those that keeps you guessing, like, is this paranormal? Is this real life? Is this a big misunderstanding kind of thing? And I love those types of books. So naturally, Verity is one of my favorites. The twist at the end is kind of ambiguous. It could go one of two ways. I personally am team manuscript. If you're not, I feel that you're wrong, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> Another book that has a very similar plot style where you're trying to figure out if this is truly something paranormal, something speculative or something real world is Home Before Dark by Riley Saker. I think this book is absolutely masterfully written. It really brings the scares of a haunted house story, but the twist at the end wrap it up in a way that's just like, how didn't I see that coming? It's like, it all got past me somehow. And it was some of the biggest shockers I've ever gotten from a modern thriller. This also has a lot of horror vibes as well. So if you're a horror fan, I feel like you would like this one. It's kind of a classic haunted house plot line, very similar to The Haunting of Hill House, where this girl grew up in a haunted house her dad wrote a book about it to try to capitalize on it. He made all this money. Then he passes away and she figures out that he still actually owns that house. So she has to go and kind of dress it up to sell it and get her inheritance. But as she is trying to get some work done on the house, she realizes that her dad's paranormal accounts might be based in more reality than she thought as she was growing up there. Now let's talk about The One by John Mars. I have very mixed thoughts and opinions on John Mars. We are not besties, but this book I love. I cannot fault him for this one, okay? Uh, this is a sci-fi thriller that is set in a world where there's this DNA love matching service. You spit in a tube just like 23andMe and you get back your results of your confirmed 100% soulmate who is the one. And we follow five people, including a serial killer, as they get their matches. This is another one like Confessions that has a twist at the end of every chapter. You never see it coming and it always makes you want to keep reading. I read this book in one sitting, even though it's almost 500 pages because I could not put it down. And everything came so out of left field. It shocked me so much. These plot twists are unmatched. Next up, another classic. Let's talk about No Exit by Taylor Adams. You've probably heard me talk about this one million and one times, but it is just so good. We're following Darby, a college student, as she's driving home for winter break. She gets caught in a snowstorm and has to pull over at this rest stop. And as she is walking around trying to get cell service outside, she notices that one of the people who's parked at the rest stop has a little girl in a cage in the back of their car. So she's now snowed in and stuck with a child abductor. It is so scary, so chilling, so incredibly fast paced. And once things start getting revealed, oh my God, Oh my God, it's just like these little reveals. I feel like they come piece by piece by piece by piece. And it's like, 
how it started versus how it is at the end, you would never see the shift. It just gets given to you in these little breadcrumb reveals that are absolutely insane. It's an easy, easy five star for me. Another super easy five star for me is Take It Back by Kia Abdullah. This follows a former criminal defense attorney who got jaded by the job and now she is a victim's advocate for alleged victims of sexual assault. And one day a young girl comes into her office claiming that a group of Muslim boys gang raped her. Our main character, Zara, is actually Muslim herself, so it is really challenging for her to help this alleged victim while condemning the Muslim boys from her own community. It introduces a lot of moral dilemmas, and at the end, just when you think you might have figured it out, the biggest bomb of all time is dropped on you and it lands on this twist that completely alters your whole mind and how you think about the entire book and i think a lot of people rate this kind of low because of that that shift in thinking is really hard to confront especially when it's around a moral dilemma but i think that is what the book was trying to do right that was the intended purpose and it 100 percent fulfilled that for me so I highly recommend it. Let's get into some Jennifer Hillier, shall we? I feel like all of her books are class A perfect representations of plot twists. The first one I wanna talk about is The Butcher. This one follows a guy whose grandfather is famous for catching this serial killer called The Butcher. But when he moves into his grandfather's house, he inherits it he ends up finding some evidence hidden there in his house that proves that maybe he got the wrong guy and the butcher is still out there killing people. I'm gonna leave it at that, but just know this book unfolds like an action movie. The imagery is so strong and you never know who to suspect the entire time. Something happens probably like 20% into the book and I swear I, I would have never seen that coming. It's the biggest plot twist and you're all of a sudden going from this domestic kind of like investigative mystery to now it's like, oh, okay, we're in the thick of it. I see, I see. And that's kind of how Jennifer Hillier does it. Another one of hers that has some phenomenal plot twists is Jar of Hearts. Y'all know this is one of my favorite books ever. I did not see anything that happens at the end coming not even in the slightest and this book is dark 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 we're following our main character geo who aided and abetted the murder of her best friend in high school so every other chapter we're getting flashbacks to high school with her friend getting murdered and then flashing back to a present day where she's actually pending trial and going to jail for this murder so many years later once her part in it is being exposed. So we see her in trial, in jail, and in the aftermath. It is very, very fast moving, but somehow still maintains the depth as we see Geo grow and develop as a character. Blew my socks off. I thought I had a theory and knew exactly what was going on, and then boom! I, mm, I, I have no words, no words for the ending of this book. The last couple Jennifer Hillier books I wanna talk about are Creep and Freak, which is the sequel to Creep. So definitely don't go into that one or even read the synopsis without reading Creep first. Creep is following a professor who is currently having an affair with her graduate student, but once her fiance proposes, she cuts him off totally ends the relationship and she wants to go all in with her fiance. Obviously, she agrees to marry him. However, she starts to suspect that that might not have been the best idea because she thinks the man that she just broke up with may be the campus killer who's in charge of all the disappearances of the co-eds that have been going missing in the recent years that he's been associated with the university. We get a serial killer POV in here, we get some dark, gruesome details, and we get the romantic subplots that I love Jennifer Hillier's books for, but the end, oh my god. I thought I knew where this book was going, and then whoop, 
plot twist. It completely went in another direction, like turned the wheel all the way 180 and um, blew my mind. I feel like because this was published so long ago, not a lot of people know about it and talk about it and read it. Girl, order it, find it, thrift it, please. It is so good. Next up, let's talk about another classic, The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides. This follows a psychologist who thinks he can break this silent patient who has not spoken of her crime in years and years and years and years. She stabbed her husband to death and she's just been mute ever since then. So he thinks he's the one, the chosen one who can deal with her. And we go through trying to figure out what happened with her as we also get pieces of the psychologist's life as well. And the way that their lives become interconnected and he kind of gets inside her mind is so psychologically terrifying. And the twist at the end is truly the reason that keeps you reading. I stayed up till four in the morning because I had to know the ending of this book and it was totally worth it. Next up, we have They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. This is another serial killer POV book, but we have a female serial killer in this one. She is another professor on a college campus and she kills the men on her college campus that do shady shit, that sexually assault students, etc., etc., and get away with it because of the horrible culture of academia. So she just takes care of the trash and we follow her as she does that. However, at the halfway point, there's a twist that literally blew my mind. I just was reading along thinking I knew exactly what was happening and then when that twist hits, it puts everything into perspective. And I thought that was gonna be the big twist of the book. Okay, yeah, we're done. Let's just finish the second half. Then it happens again at the end and everything gets twisted around and it's different from what you thought. It is so good. It is so dark academia vibes. I think this one is perfect to read in the fall or if you're just wanting fall vibes, like if you're looking for something to read during summer ween, this would be a great one. If you're looking for something a little more horror, a little bit darker, but that still brings the thriller twists, we have Survivor by J.F. Gonzalez. Obviously, I was gonna talk about this book. I absolutely love it. I do want to mention, listen up, this is an extreme horror novel. Look up trigger warnings, please. I don't look up trigger warnings. I know that I can handle pretty much anything. I've yet to run into a book that has really bothered me deeply to the point where I had to stop reading it, but I know that's a problem for a lot of people who I've recommended this book to. So please do not take this recommendation unless you are 100% confident you can read dark and graphic content. If you can handle that, however, this book is phenomenal. The bigger conspiracy behind what's happening will just blow your mind. It's so much like Pretty Girls in that aspect. And it's also like Pretty Girls because it follows the plot of a snuff film being made. This woman is kidnapped on a vacation with her husband and told she's going to star in a snuff film. And if you don't know what that is, I'm gonna let you look it up on your own time, but please don't look at any images or videos of that at risk of traumatizing yourself. The twist in this though, absolutely crazy. The way that the prologue, you just totally forget about it as you're reading and then it gets tied in at the end and it's like, oh my, oh my God, oh my God. The reveals, they're just masterfully done. And I absolutely love this book. I know it's a controversial one, not everyone will love it, but it's for me. Let's talk about a new release, The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. This one is one that I know will be super controversial when it comes out. The twists in this one are of a speculative nature and I think they're going to be very divisive. You're either gonna love it or hate it. And me personally, I really, really loved the way that this was done. I was able to suspend my disbelief and because of that, I enjoyed it so much. I thought it was so, so fun. We are basically following this actress who has been struggling, okay? She had a major scandal. She's been dealing with a lot of mental health problems, alcoholism, grief, 
trauma. So her mom kind of just sends her away to a lake house to recover and, and really let her image recover rather than her actual self. And while she's there, it's a very exclusive lake and the lake houses around the lake are only owned by famous people. So she's spying on all the famous people that have their lake houses there. And the people across the lake directly from her that she puts her little binoculars on and spies on are a supermodel and her tech billionaire husband. Well, one day the supermodel doesn't show up on the lake. And so she suspects that her husband killed her in the night. However, our narrator is extremely unreliable because of her alcoholism, memory lapses, and mental health issues. So we don't quite know if she's 100% knowing what's going on here. <laughs> but we go on this ride with her and when we find out what is truly happening, I mean, it shook me. It shook me to my core. I will never forget this book. There are a lot of books where you read it, it's just a throwaway, thriller, whatever, three stars, I'm gonna forget about it. Not this one, not, no, she is not one of those. She is unique. And the last book that I wanna talk about in this video is probably my favorite domestic thriller that I've ever read. And that is The Last Mrs. Parrish by Liv Constantine. I absolutely love this book. You go into it thinking it's just gonna be this bougie, rich people drama, domestic thriller. And it has one of those twists at the halfway point that just completely changes your perspective of the book. We are following Daphne, who is this rich, luxurious, wonderful woman. And then this scrappy little girl comes up and says, bitch, I'm gonna steal your life. Steal your husband, do everything from the inside when I become your nanny. It goes off the rails from there. The twist completely flips the book on its head. And I think this one is a perfect pool summer read so it's perfect to pick up right now I think the paperback copy even has like a pool with a girl lounging with like this big hat on oh my gosh it's so perfect for summer y'all need this if you're looking for something that is summery but also packs a huge punch with the twists so those are all of the books with my favorite plot twist. I hope you guys got some great book recommendations from this video. Thank you again to Skillshare for kindly sponsoring this video. If you liked this video, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to go to therapy and read a book this week. All right, that's it for me, guys. I will see you in my next one. Bye. Oh,